Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about common dangers that pet parrots face in our household. Now there are so many dangers in just your house that your pet parrots can come into contact with. So I'm gonna maybe make this into two parts, maybe three. I mean, there are so many. So this is part one, I'll do about 10 per video. And then you can kind of get an all round picture of what's dangerous for your birds. Uh, so I've got Pickles, my green cheek Kanye, she's going to be with me helping explain all the dangers today and then I've got the boys, um, they're just in their cage behind me, they would be out, however I know that they're going to put themselves in danger if I get them out because I'm going to be focused on filming and they're going to go and do some of the things I'm going to mention in the video, so they're going to be hanging out back there and then as soon as I've finished they're going to be straight back out and causing more mischief, so um, let's get into it. I have got a lot of eye pain today, so I'm a bit more squinty than normal, and I apologise. Um, but also, if you're new here, hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Sophie, and I make videos on all things parrots and birds, and my visual impairment, and uh, daily life vlogs. So if that's something you're interested in, it would be amazing if you could subscribe. Um, but other than that, let's get into the video. So first up are non-stick products. That can be things like saucepans, frying pans, rice cookers, waffle makers, toasty makers, hair dryers, irons. So many different products now have a non-stick coating. Now birds have a very efficient but sensitive respiratory system. And when these products with a non-stick coating get heated up, they release a very toxic fume. Um, and that stays, when the birds breathe it in, it stays within their bodies because of the way that their respiratory system works. Um, and it is very bad news, let me tell you. I've seen a lot of horror stories recently of people who just don't realise. And it isn't really something that a lot of people think about. They wouldn't know unless you look it up. Thank you for that feather pickles. <laughs> um, so it's often listed um, on like the details of the product as Teflon, which a lot of people know. Uh, it's also P, what is it, PTFE or PFOA, just want to make sure I get that right, so PTFE or PFOA, they're bad. So if you're looking for a product that um, is safe to use, make sure it says that they are free of those products, or you can get things like stainless steel. I'll link the frying pan I use, <laughs> if anyone's interested, it's from Amazon, I'll link it below, uh, and that one is definitely safe, it's just stainless steel, um, so you could try that or you can do your own research, but if you're not sure about your cookware, feel free to leave it in the comments and I can give you a heads up of, as to where it's good or not. But as a general rule, if you think it's unsafe, just don't use it. I mean, even if your birds are in a different part of the house, it's just not worth the risk because it is very dangerous and very serious. So non-stick pans, non-stick anything really are an absolute no-no. Before I get into the next one, um, the boys are settling down for their afternoon naps. You might hear some beaky grinding, which is really cute. And it's like this kind of weird crunchy noise and it means that they're really happy and relaxed, which I can hear them doing, but whether it comes out on the camera, I don't know. Um, but number two on my list um, are poisonous food and drink. Most humans or processed food is not good for parrots. You're gonna get plenty of people saying, I had a parrot that lived for X amount of years and his long life and all he ate was rich tea biscuits and a cup of coffee in the morning. I'm sorry, but that's probably a one-off because it's not good for your parrot. Now, there are also things that you might think are, <laughs> stop biting my ear. There are also things that you might think are okay for your parrot, but they're absolutely not. For example, avocado is really, really toxic for your bird. Um, it takes about 20 grams of ingested avocado to something like a cockatiel for it to be extremely serious, but it's never even worth the risk for them to get a morsel. So if you're eating avocado or having avocado, just keep it well away from the birds. Um, other foods are not good for them, but can be okay in tiny quantities. For example, tomatoes. I mean, the tomato leaf and stem is toxic, but the tomato itself is okay, but I wouldn't recommend it because it is so highly acidic that it's not great for their um, internal system. Um, there are other foods as well, like onions and garlic, things from that family, they are very bad for birds. And then things that you would hope that most people would realise are not good for birds, such as alcohol and chocolate. Uh, but people, unfortunately, still do occasionally give their birds that kind of thing, and please don't. So what I'm going to do is, in the description, I'm going to put a link of uh, safe foods and toxic foods and things like that. Hopefully it will be a fairly extensive list, but obviously there's so many things in the world that we <laughs> try and um, co collate a, a good big list together. So if there's anything you're not sure of, please again, ask in the comments and I can let you know whether it's safe or not. Um, but there are loads of fresh fruits and vegetables that are safe and please try them with your parrots because a fresh diet makes for a healthy, happy parrot. Next up on our list are household cleaners and disinfectants. 
Now, most of these ones that you can buy in the supermarket would all be harmful for your bird if you were to use them around them. Um, you can use them in other parts of the home where your birds have no contact. For example, I don't bring my birds into the bathroom with me so I can clean my bathroom with normal stuff as long as I uh, fully ventilate the room. However, never ever use the things that you can buy in the supermarket on your birds' cages because they can cause lots of harm, not only through inhalation from the strong fumes, but also from um, ingestion if there's any kind of residue left and also through skin or feather contact. <laughs> You're getting very overexcited, aren't you? Um, so the one that I use, I'll show you, I've got it here, is, the boys are being really noisy, so I apologise. The one that I use is F10. So this is an avian disinfectant, it's veterinary strength, and you can get this from places like Northern Parrots. So I'll pop a link in the description. Oh, they're so noisy. This is really great value for money because you use one mil per 100 mils of water, so you can get loads and loads of bottles if you make it up into a separate clean bottle like I do, and then you can spray away to your heart's content uh, in and around the birds, obviously not when they're in the cage, but when you're doing your daily or weekly cleans, um, you can be using this. And this is effective against bacteria, uh, fungus, spores and viruses. So it covers a whole host of uh, nasties and um, really good value for money. So definitely recommend F10. Wave. Good girl. <laughs> so next up are ingestible fibres and that can be things like strings hanging from your t-shirt, uh, the carpet or most commonly from rope perches and from happy huts or cosy huts fuzzy huts, whatever they call them, they're the, um, the little houses that you can get for, <laughs> for birds and um, they kind of nuzzle in there. So a lot of the time, if you know anything about parrots, you'll know that they're chewers and they will chew these fuzzy huts and cosy huts and anything fabricy. and all of these fibres will get stuck in their crop and it will cause an impaction which is very serious. So stay clear of those fuzzy huts, not only that but they cause a lot of uh, hormonal behaviour resurgence which is not what you want because hormonal parrots are difficult parrots let me tell you um so stay clear of those in terms of rope perches it really depends on your individual parrot for example we had rope perches for the boys for a little while until i realized that they were picking it apart and then trying to chew the fibers so they don't have them anymore uh, pickles does have one though and she doesn't chew her perch so hers is safe to be in there if you did have loads of loads of rope perches and you didn't want to get rid of them you could cover them in a uh, vet wrap however that didn't work for the boys i tried that and they made loads of mess on it yes they did and um also they just picked up the vet wrap just to get into the goodies so <laughs> it didn't work for me it might work for you if you still wanted a kind of rope thing you might be able to see in the background there these long ones that i have are made out of sisal sisal is safe um so they're kind of a nice alternative although i haven't found any that are sort of 30 centimetres, which is what I'm looking for. So if anyone knows any sizzle perches that are 30 centimetres, hit me up in the comments because I'm looking for them. Next up on the list are unsafe toys. Now it can be really hard to know whether a toy is truly safe or not. I almost always buy my toys made out of natural materials that I know are safe, like balsa wood, um, some cotton rope, which again, I am very careful with, but it can be safe if you monitor um, the toys you have. Um, I also use willow, that kind of thing. Anything made out of acrylic, I generally stay clear from. I've got one toy and where it's got an acrylic back and it's got loads of like wood pieces that they can chew. So I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, some toys that people sell have clasps on them that are so dangerous. Instead of having the little twizzly bit that you can get, they're just kind of a snapshot clasp and that is just asking for trouble. So steer clear of those. Um, yeah, there's loads of different unsafe toys and it's just so, so hard, as I said. So again, if you're looking for some advice, link the toys in the comments and I can let you know if they're safe or not. Um, I would also, as a general rule, stay away from bells, bells and mirrors. Mirrors cause a lot of resurgence with this hormonal behaviour and actually cause a bit of aggression too. Um, but bells can cause problems because they can get parts of their body stuck in the actual bell and that's not really worth the risk. I mean, a lot of toys have a kind of clause on them to say supervise your birds and I only really keep toys in their cages that I know are safe, unsupervised from experience. <laughs> Everyone's being so noisy today, I'm sorry. Um, but this is reality of having parrots, so don't be quiet when you're trying to film. 
So anyway, as I was saying, as a general rule, uh, be extra careful, try and go for natural materials you know are safe. And if you're not sure, link me in the comments and I can let you know. Are you printing me? Thank you so much. Okay, so next up on the list is something that a lot of new parrot owners don't realise that are a problem and they find it very hard to give up and sometimes refuse to. And that is things like candles, air fresheners, wax melts, oil diffusers, um, what else, like aromatherapy diffusers, which are kind of all the rage at the moment. They are not safe. Even ones that say they are safe, they are not safe. If you are burning something to release a smell or you are using something uh, like an aerosol, it is not safe for your bird for the exact same reason as I mentioned about the uh, non-stick coatings at the start. They release all these fumes and the birds breathe them in and these fumes stay inside their bodies. It is not good for birds. And it's very hard because people love candles. I know I used to absolutely love candles. In fact, if you watch my vlogs, you might think I'm being a hypocrite right now because I do have candles around my house. However, I never ever light them. They are purely decorational. I'm gonna show you my favorite one now. Um, David bought this for me in Brighton and it is just, I mean, I don't think you can find a better candle really. So it is by um, Gisella, Gisella Graham, I think it is. And if you can see, look at this. It's got all the birds on. It's got glass, which are like one of my all time birds I'd love to own. It's got blue and gold and um, it's meant to be a hyacinth there. It's just amazing, like the, the perfect candle for me, but I can't light it, but it's fine because I, I like looking at it. So <laughs> um, yeah. So if you're gonna have candles, they have to be for display purposes only. Uh, things like air fresheners, they're just a no-no. Um, open your windows, obviously when your birds are safely in the cages, you know, get some fresh air in if you can. Um, if you want a safe way to make your home smell fresh and you can't open the windows for whatever reason, what you can do is, on the hob with your safe pan, is you can pour some water with things like cloves or cinnamon or orange peel. Um, safe again, safe natural things, and you can bring up the boil and let it simmer and it will make your entire house smell incredible. So that is what I'd recommend if you are looking to freshen up the home a bit but you can't open the windows, but generally as a rule, please don't use them. They are so dangerous. Okay, next up, we are talking about frights and spooks. Now any bird in your home can experience a fright or a spook, but for some reason cockatiels over here are more prone to frights, especially night frights, which can be really distressing as an owner, let alone it's distressing for the bird. Um, so so many different things can cause frights and spooks. It could be wildlife passing by the window or car lights passing at night, loud noises, new things, new people, moths, people moving around in the darkness if you need to, you know, get out for a wee in the night or something. Um, even their own feathers, <laughs> if they're molting and one falls out while they're fluffing up in the night time. We've had that. Um, basically anything and everything, their own shadows can give them a spook. And it is quite distressing and stressful because they thrash about and need a lot of calming down. If your bird is having a spook, never ever get it out of its cage because it will fly around the room and crash land and hurt itself. So try and calm it down in the cage, talk nice and softly. Um, and that is the best way to deal with it. Sometimes feathers can get broken or nails can get caught when they have a fright. So it's really important to know what to do in an emergency if things like this happen. Um, if you want a video on that kind of thing, like what to do in an emergency with birds or bird first aid kits, let me know in the comments and I can make one. I think that might be quite interesting to do. But they are very distressing. So preparing yourself and understanding it may happen is very good. One of the ways that we try and stop the birds from having a night fright is by having night lights for them. So they kind of have a very low level light fish very low level light and they can see what's going on so we have one that plugs into an extension cord like this uh, it's fairly cheap from amazon and then we have two other ones which we charge via usb now we've got this cute bear and this little chick as well so we kind of alternate what we're using um you don't want it to be too bright that they can't sleep but it needs to be light enough for them so they can kind of see what's going on. Thank you guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into the debate of covering birds. I think that deserves kind of a topic on its own. I do not cover my birds for many reasons. So we'll leave that there, but frights and spooks are something that can cause harm to your birds. Next up are other pets. Um, there are so many videos online 
of parrots cuddling up to dogs or playing or chasing cats and to Joe public it looks really cute but it's just a disaster waiting to happen. Um, dogs and cats are predator animals by nature and all it takes is a split second and instant and they will snap and they can hurt your bird. Not only that, if you have a, a slightly larger parrot, I mean even pickles, her bites are quite hard, they can actually hurt your other pets if they bite too hard or play too hard. Um, if you're ever in a situation where you have a pet parrot and other pets in the house, please keep them separate. If you're going to get your pet parrots out to exercise or play or uh, for some enrichment, make sure other pets are locked into another part of the house. It is just not worth the risk and people think it is. I, I don't know how you can justify it really because there are so many people who say, oh, well, they've played fine for ages, so it's not a problem. But it, all it takes is that one time. And is, is it worth it? I don't think so. Um, I've even heard of other pets who are kept in the other room and they find their way into the bird room by accident and they jump up at the cage and it causes stress to the birds or they accidentally nip them or get them with their claws or even sometimes for poorly made cages they can accidentally open the cage and let the birds out so it is something to be very very cautious about and don't just believe videos that you see on the internet that everything's fine because it's just such a big risk and the things like cats who have a very toxic uh, saliva having that near your birds as well is just very unsafe. Another danger that is in pretty much every single household, I'd be surprised if there isn't one with pet parrot, are wires. Wires and cables. I don't know what it is with birds and wires and cables, but they are absolutely obsessed. I know mine are, and we have to keep a really close eye on them. They're never left unsupervised because they would just go and just have a full on buffet on all of the wires. Um, try your best to kind of have them tucked away if you can. I know it's not always possible with the amount of tech that most people have these days, or a lot of people if you're very lucky. Um, but try and have your wires away. And as I said, like I do, try and supervise your birds um, fully when they're out. Don't just sort of leave them because you've got to go and leave the room. I mean, if the postman comes, I'll leave them in the room for a sec while I go and grab the post, but I would never leave them in here for an extended period of time out and about because they go for the wires and then they like to chew the wood up above my curtain pole which is very annoying and it's really hard to get them down because I'm quite short so never have them unattended and also even if the wires aren't plugged in like this one's just a USB cable it's still a danger for them because it's not safe material to be chewing um, and as I said all birds will do it my birds have got so many different toys to chew I can't even tell you the amount of money I've put into buying them chewable toys and they just want to chew the naughty things so be very careful. I don't know what is going on with my hair at the moment, Pickles has just kind of taken over so never mind let's carry on. The last thing on my list today is not something physical as such but it is one of the biggest dangers that I see especially at this time of year which is miscommunication. Now you may be aware of all of the things that I mentioned in this video and hopefully in the next video that I mentioned as well and, and things like that, but if the people who you live with in your home aren't aware of those things, then you're possibly in for a bit of trouble. Uh, what you could do is maybe share this link <laughs> for this video with them so they're aware of um, some of the dangers or just have a chat with them and just make sure. Now. Not only the things on the list, but one of the main things I see in terms of miscommunication is when your birds are out. If other people in your house don't realise they're out or they're already out and they're coming in, then they might come in and start opening windows, leaving doors open if they've got to get things out the car. And it's a recipe for disaster. And I've already seen this year so many lost parrot adverts where there's been miscommunication where people haven't realised that a bird is out and they've left the window open and then uh, there you go. So let people in your home know that you're getting your birds out. You know, they could start a WhatsApp group maybe, or just let them know in person that the birds are coming out just to let you know. And then obviously let them know when the birds have gone home as well, so that they're kind of kept in the loop of when they can get on with bits and pieces. But having everyone in the home be really on, bird with, on board with what's <laughs> bird safe is so important. And it's a way of making sure that your birds stay happy and healthy. So communication, good miscommunication bad so that's everything for today's video as i said part two will be coming out in the future but if there's anything you think i've missed of course pop it in the comments you may see it pop up in a future video um, and of course share this video as i said with anyone who may not be aware of some of these parrot dangers for their pets or if they live in your household as well um, so i hope you enjoyed 
and informative. Um, and if you're looking for more bird content, then please do stick around. Hit the subscribe if you're interested. That'd be very cool. And I'll have another video out for you very soon. So from Pickles, Chip, Fish and I, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic week and take care and see you later.